This is Jessica. This is Kelly, the Chasing Brighter podcast. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Today, Kelly and I are going to be talking about our own journeys of self-discovery and the tips we have for you to begin your own journey of self-discovery. Kelly and I think of self-discovery as helping you become more self-aware and helping you evolve as a human. And we think to do that, it's by looking and focusing on your body, mind, and spirit. And when we're thinking of the body, mind, and spirit, we kind of broke that down into four pillars for a personal journey. Kelly, why don't you share with us the first pillar? Yeah. So, you know, I think um, the first one is really a no brainer and we will always mention it time and time again, Um, but it's about practicing mindfulness and meditation. This is a simple way to, you know, start to really spend um, some time with yourself um, in a quiet way. It's free. It's got unbelievable mental and physiological benefits, um, which maybe you all have heard. Uh, You know, for me, meditation is, I had a really hard time with it at first because it's just really hard to like sit in quiet and calm your mind. And what I learned is a, you don't have to calm your mind, but it's really about practicing um, that mindfulness and practicing that calm. And, uh, you know, even starting with a one to two minute meditation can have a great amount of benefits to kind of de de-stress you and calm you. In fact, I even have my kids, you know, with Alexa on their, you know, Amazon, Alexa dots or echoes or whatever to do like a one or two minute meditation. It's just something, um, you know, there's, if you have an Apple watch, there's, there's ability to do a one minute breathing exercise. Um, all of those things are super awesome. Uh, I also love one of my, some of my favorite meditations. I think Jess, you should share yours too, which my favorite meditation leader is Tara Brock and she's got a great podcast. Um, and she has just a treasure trove, even her website, um, has so many different ways that you can, um, use meditation, um, in your daily life. How about you, Jess? What meditations do you like? Yeah. Well, I also wanted to just add that meditation also has so many benefits, reducing stress, improving attention and focus, increasing self-awareness, increased memory and increased create creativity. And that's just with five minutes of meditation a day. There are also studies that talk about it, reducing inflammation and boosting your immune system. Um, so just so many benefits. And I think that's so awesome that you're getting, um, your kids on board with that. Um, I do listen to that podcast as well. Um, and then, uh, I, I have some, some, I, I like a guided meditation, but I do, I do think I'm getting to the point where I no longer need a guide, but we have one that was sent to us by our, by a spiritual healer. So I don't, um, it's just a little seven minute morning and night meditation. But what I've really gotten into recently is the, the trip app T R I P P. And we got a quest Oculus and I've been doing, um, I guess kind of virtual reality meditations, which have been really cool. Oh, so I've been enjoying cool. those a lot. Um, and then there are some on YouTube that I listened to. I was really struggling with forgiveness a while for a while in 2021. And there is a, um, a YouTube meditation for, uh, letting go. And the guy walks you through walking on the beach and you're dragging this heavy anchor and you, you cut it and let go. So I have found interestingly, um, so I have my regular meditations. I will just sit for five to 10 minutes and and do my own meditation. But also I think YouTube is an incredible resource, whatever you're dealing with. Like if you're like, you know, meditation for stress, meditation for feeling depressed, meditation for a head cold. It's probably on there for YouTube. And so um, there, there's all different um, ways that you can access it. You know, it doesn't have to be some uber amazing person like Tara Brock, who is a, a Buddhist monk, um, but, you know, also just kind of finding something for what you're dealing with at that time. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like, tell me what your thoughts are on this, but especially growing up, Catholic and um, being exposed to a lot of prayer, I feel like 
they don't they say prayer is also a form of meditation? Yeah, I kind of think of them one in the same. And I was also thinking about when I was hearing you talk about meditation helps us get in touch with ourselves. I know you've mentioned before on the podcast, thinking back to um, Glennon Doyle and her book Untamed, but when she says tapping into your knowing and um, listening, uh, I know you said that a little bit on the Gift of Fear book club, but like when we are able to tap into ourselves, then we're able to trust our gut more and get to know ourselves more. And um, I know I said this before too, but like when you're talking about prayer, Russell Brand had said, you know, prayer is talking to God and meditation is listening. Um, But I I like Mm -hmm. the idea of just meditating and just kind of tapping into yourself um, and making sure, you know, that you're um, kind of going along the journey that you want to be going along on. Yep. And um, so we, a, a second pillar would be engaging in joyful activities, exploring activities that you enjoy and do them regularly. I think, um, Kelly, I don't know if you, if you agree with this, but do you still kind of identify as an athlete at heart? Absolutely. And so I think for me, us being so sporty, sporty growing up, I think that for a long time, I was thinking that physical activity would be something that would be really strenuous and grueling and really hard. Um, but as I've gone along my own journey of self-discovery, I have found that I really enjoy restorative physical activity, um, like a yoga, Pilates, more of a mind-body connection, and um, walking, hiking, and biking. So on my journey, kind of discovering, you know, this whole what you should do, like I thought I should be drenched in sweat and physical pain for activity, but kind of finding that wasn't what's bringing me joy. Um, And also uh, I love, I'm a crafter um, and I I love baking. So kind of allowing uh, me to follow my joy and making sure I'm engaging in activities um, that fill my cup. How about for you, Kelly? What are what are some joyful activities for you? Yeah, I love hiking. I used to do it a lot more alone. Um, I haven't done it, you know, during COVID. I think it's one of those times where I really carved out a lot of alone time to do hikes. I haven't done any um, as much as I would like. Uh, that definitely brings me joy. I am always trying new things. I picked up tennis this year, which was really fun. Um, Although I did tear my Achilles the first time I took a tennis lesson, what's a long story. Um, But I have continued to play tennis after I've recovered. Um, I'm in a golf league. Uh, So those are the types of activities that I think it's fun to meet new people, especially people who are um, share the same interests. One of the things that I also took up a couple of years ago that I had not done voluntarily previously was sewing. So I took sewing when I was a kid in 4-H. My mom helped me. It was like a last minute cram to put a some sort of a pattern together in an outfit. Whereas now I, I picked it up. I did a little bit when, when my first son was born, I made some like cloth diaper covers, but I really picked it up a little bit more um, the last couple of years. So sewing is definitely something I enjoy. It's finding things, I think finding that um, making things um, is one part that I think brings me a lot of fulfillment. You talk about crafting and baking, definitely feel the same way. And I also think that helps build your sense of self and self-esteem. I think one, it can be a mindful practice when you're like, for instance, sewing and you're like cutting the pattern and pinning the pattern as if I know anything about sewing. Um, and then, you know, uh, putting it in the machine, there's a mindfulness component, but I think that builds a sense of self when you create something and you're done and there's that sense of accomplishment. And I think that also kind of feeds your soul. Yeah. There is a really great post that will, um, we'll put in our blog. It's a link to, um, wing who has a whole list on all the things you can do to kind of like feed your creativity and nurture your soul. And I really loved um, a lot of the ideas she had about um, different ways you can do that. Because I think, you know, it doesn't have to be one way. And, you know, frankly, even for me, I, I haven't done any sewing in the last six months, but I'm, you know, I'm playing tennis and golfing more. And so things just kind of move around, but it's the whole idea of 
you know, making time for yourself, right? Making time for yourself and doing things that you enjoy. And I don't think it has to be a solo activity either, you know? Um, I think so, um, you know, we recently went to Cooperstown together and um, I thought that was so great us being able to walk and hike every day. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed uh, doing that. And I think I used to hike a ton by myself until um, we were hiking together and into a rattlesnake. Yes. Yes. And so that freaked me out. And then I started researching rattlesnakes and um, found out that there were just so many rattlesnakes everywhere. And that uh, summer was the time when they're out and I was going out in prime rattlesnake time when the weather was cooler. Uh, and so I've, I'm trying to get back into hiking and figuring out how I can address that fear during this time of year, because um, that doesn't bring me joy, the fear of, and then I'm Gabby and I went <laughs> a few weeks ago and then, um, she was like, is that a snake? Is that a snake? Because I had told her just kind of be mindful of snakes, rattlesnakes. <laughs> so then she was kind of on hyper alert, which I think negatively impacted <laughs> her hike. Yeah, I um, think when we were out in New York and I walked a little bit alone, I was like walking like a monk, like just kind of being more like deliberate in my steps and like scanning as I stepped because I was nervous. I think out here in Illinois, it's mostly garter snakes. I've never seen anything worse than that. So I'm less like afraid. I'm more like on alert. The other thing is, is that year of COVID shutdown, I never saw more snakes in my life than those 12 months. And they say, you know, if you see a snake, it's like a sign of change, mm. which was a really, um, you know, stressful time for everybody. And so I guess I've wondered, I haven't seen a snake in like almost two years now. So then I'm like, well, maybe I was just going through a lot of change. Even when we saw the rattlesnake, maybe you won't yeah. see them anymore. That's interesting. I've never heard that before. Does that change your opinion of snakes? Because I know you do not like snakes. Well, I've really been, um, I had a big, I had an encounter with a giant garter snake when I was, when I was um, hiking alone. And um I actually paused and took a picture of it and like really tried to um, like be conscious of the fact that it was like, you know, God made the snake, the snake's not going to hurt me. It's just a thing. It's just such an odd looking creature that I creeps me out. So I was trying to like overcome that. I think when you encounter a rattlesnake in a striking pose, it's a little different of a, <laughs> of a situation. I mean, that was, we were in danger. Yeah. It was like rattling. Like it, that was just like a, we That's never a warning. Really, That's yeah. warning. Get the F away. Or well, we it. ran off and didn't tell any right. of the fellow hikers behind us. Yeah, so it was no. like total hiking failure. I would say that's failure. because our adrenaline took over and we were in our rational brains and sorry, fellow hikers. And I hope no one was attacked later that right. day. Hopefully nobody was injured. We won't tell that you. That was also day. like height of COVID. And I think, yeah. you know, when we saw someone, you know, we ha stuck our masks on and we like tried to stay away from them and still yeah, a lot of fear lingering at that time. Yeah. Yeah. True. And so, um, oh, go ahead. Yeah, no, I was going to so let's talk about the next, next, um, yes, or the third pillar that us, that, that, um, us, uh, journeyers have come across to be helpful would be, um, energy work. And some people call that body work, um, you know, but energy healing, uh, can there, there are so many different, um, types of energy healing. Um, I know that you and I have both, um, done, uh, some, some with, with Reiki and then theta healing. Um, but people can also call that, you know, spiritual healing. Um, I know here in Vegas, there's, um, I, I'm sorry, I'm not going to recall the name, but there is a spiritual center where they have shamans and Reiki healers and all different types of um, uh, spiritual energy healers. And I think when we talk about those pillars, body, mind, and spirit, to me, um, that addresses all three, but maybe for me, my experiences were a little more spiritual. And I first started going to um, an energy healer. I had a friend that was going for years and she just said like the healer and I had no idea what it was. Um, but I had noticed that after she would go, she would be in, in like just a better place for six to nine months. And we had kind of talked about going. And then one day I just decided I'm just going to go. 
Um, and I went and had a really incredible experience, which I think allowed me to open myself up to a spiritual source and also completely changed my ability to meditate and has changed meditation for me moving forward. Um, and so then that allowed me to be open to go to other energy healers. Um, and Kelly, how about you and, and your first experience? Yeah. I mean, the uh, spiritual healer was really, um, really amazing. Um, did you do yours remote or in person? No, I went in person. Yeah. And so I had done mine remote because it was right during COVID. And um, that was really crazy just being even literally on the phone, not even no, no camera, no anything who, and working with a person who could really channel um, and read my energy. And I agree, it became a foundational part of my meditation going forward. Um, it was a, it, what was cool is in that one session, it's tremendously exhausting. So it was a lot of like emotional um, overload in a lot of ways, but it truly felt healing. Um, and just, you know, when I first kind of went through this process and it, you talk about healing from the past, it, everyone has their own past and their own traumas and sometimes they're holding us back. And so the ability to really let go of those things and find ways to do that have a tremendous benefit. And so that's what I found was amazing on this spiritual healer. And it, it certainly was probably the most significant um, catalyst for the spiritual part of my self-discovery journey. And, you know, one of the things that you and I have done over the last year-ish was um, our weekly kind of chakra cleanse um, with Janet, which was super awesome too you know? Um, yeah. and that was really a, a great part of our own meditation practice. And, and Janet is a, is a Reiki healer. Um, and, uh, you know, the tenets of Reiki right are like every, everything here on earth has energy that flows through it. And a Reiki healer helps, you know, energy flow through them and to you. So you can kind of work on healing yourself. Part of the Reiki healing is regular maintenance of, um, your spiritual self in a lot of ways. It doesn't have to be every day. It doesn't even have to be every week, but it's really helps to um, bring bring a better connection to yourself and the universe um, and reminding ourselves that, that we are loved and there is a higher power, which is pretty awesome. Um, you know, the other part of even healing from my past or addressing my past was therapy, Jess. And so, you know, I kind of put that as part of this too, is, um, you know, I worked with a therapist and really worked through, you know, some of the things to learn about myself. And I, I think the biggest part was, you know, to really stop with feeling shameful or embarrassed about maybe the things that I am not so good at, because you just kind of learn that everybody has their own situation. And so just kind of embracing mine. And I know we've talked about, you know, some of the things I found about myself is anxiety that I struggle with anxiety and um, emotional neglect that I really run away from my feelings. And so, you know, those aren't things that get fixed overnight um, and they're still not fixed, but they're definitely things, you know, I'm working on. Um, as we say, we're doing the work. Yeah, I, I went, so I've gone to therapy several times over, over my lifetime and in my early twenties when I was in graduate school, I, and working full-time, I think it was having like a nervous breakdown and I went to therapy. And I think at that time, I was able to address a lot of my issues from our family of origin. And interestingly, I was really validating when I went to see a spiritual healer and she was like, oh, there's like nothing there from your parents. Like you worked through that. <laughs> I mean, I'm not perfect in any way, but it was nice that someone recognized I had been working hard there. Um, and I think I also, and then I, I went to therapy again. 2021 or something. I think it's great as we go through the life cycle, different things happen and maybe the tools and the strategies that you learned in therapy before are no longer working, or it's just different stuff you hadn't addressed yet. So I always think it's, yeah. it's great. It's beneficial to have an outside person, um, who has, you know, no agenda for you, um, to get feedback there. And also I would say, I recommend a lot of clients who have had trauma, you know, you do the work, you read the books, you do so many things, and then it's still kind of stuck there. And that, that energy work, 
can help you learn to let things flow, right? It's like practicing things flowing through you and um, letting them go and continuing for them to be able to th flow so they don't get stuck again, right? We want to keep kind of practicing that. And I know I brought up a little bit, um, a little bit there about Glennon Doyle's book and reading. And that brings us to, you know, our fourth pillar, you know, which is edu educating yourself, right? Um, reading, listening to podcasts. Those are kind of the things that, that I, my, those are my go-tos. Um, my, the book that really, I think, uh, started my my journey of self discovery would have been Glennon Doyle's Untamed. That that would be my top recommendation, um, and also a book I love and I reference every single day is uh, The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. Um, the Four Agreements is a really short book. It's four agreements. It's like 120 plus pages, um, and then with Glennon Doyle. Now I listen to her podcast, We Can Do Hard Things. I listened to, I read Brene Brown's book, The Gifts of Imperfection. I listened to Brene yeah. Brown's podcast, Unlocking Us. I do listen to Tara Brock's podcast. Um, so for me, it's really um, books and uh, podcasts. How about for you, Kelly? What are the ways that you're trying to, um, you know, educate yourself? Yeah, so I think the... Um, the books you mentioned, I mean, The Four Agreements is a super quick, easy read. It's something you could read again and again. Um, they even make like little reference cards because it's a lot of really great information you can use every day. And Untamed is definitely a good one. Um, I think it helps because, you know, through that, Glennon Doyle really puts, you know, a human perspective on some of the challenges and just knowing that we all have our own struggles. So I think that one was really awesome and empowering. Um, as I went on my own self-discovery journey, um, I read Daring Greatly from Brene Brown. So Brene has a bunch of different books. Um, she's got a Netflix series and a podcast. Um, she's tremendous in terms of tackling vulnerability, which is really a key part of, you know, as you explore yourself and you see the things that, you know, you don't necessarily always want to see and dwell on. It's about being vulnerable. It's about letting people see all of you. And I think that's been a really key part of making my own journey and just my within my own relationships. Um, the last book I would mention, which came from um, our spiritual healer, was Rise, Sister, Rise. So I think, you know, part of us doing and focusing on Chasing Brighter is about empowering women. And so I loved Rise, Sister, Rise because it's so, it's such a cool, like, um, spiritual um book for women in a lot of ways. Um, it's all about empowering women and it talks a lot about, um, you know, learning your own truth and, and leading the way for other women and how we set, set ourselves as examples for others, all of us always. Um, and it talks a lot about which our spiritual guide also mentioned, which is just about like, as a woman, you carry like all the what was the word from all the women who were before you and that rise sister why rise is that too which is channeling all the women who were here before you which is a pretty awesome thing to think about and i also uh with glennon doyle's book i encourage anyone to just to check out um my review of it because i have so much to say i could spend the whole podcast on it but we do have that on our bookshelf um on our blog um, and then you talking about books recommended from our spiritual healer. I do have to do a shout out for Anita Morjani's book, Sensitive is the New Strong. Anyone out there who thinks they might be an empath or knows they're an empath, that book is really incredible. It was really incredible in helping me understand myself more, um, understanding why I'm so, you know, quote unquote sensitive and uh, learning and, and accepting that part of me and owning it as a strength. That's awesome, Jess. And I think, you know, I think to, in a lot of ways to summarize what we talked about is we really wanted to use this episode as kind of a highlights reel, if you will, about it. And I think, you know, this really, what we're sharing today is the foundation of why we're doing Chasing Brighter, right, Jess? And so yeah. I think we'll probably even be talking about all of these things in so many ways, shapes, or forms. Um, and we will also have a blog post on it so everyone can get more information. 
Yeah, I think um, I want to, you know, we want to inspire everyone to go on their own, their own journey and learn about themselves. And I really want to highlight this is, or we both want to highlight, this is not a how to, this is not a black and white. This is what you should do. This is like, Hey, we found this stuff really helpful. And if any of this sparks interest for you, check it out, check it out and see if that's something that helps you on your journey. Um, but there's not a right or a wrong way to do any of this. Absolutely. It's all about um, thinking about how you can evolve yourself, like you said, um, continue to find joy in your life. Absolutely. That's all for today. Thanks for listening. And don't forget to follow us on chasingbrighter.com or on YouTube at Chasing Brighter or on Instagram at Chasing Brighter.